When we say to par par Parliament and to South Africans, these presiding officers are, are biased. These presiding officers are partisan. They think we are we we, we attack women. A feminist say no. EFF males attack women. But who, who, Zuma is not a woman. We attack him. And and. Uh, presiding officers, we don't care whether the female is sitting there or a male. We still attack them if they are not in uh, uh, compliant with the with the rules and the constitution. Listen to what uh, presiding officers do. They they say parliamentary protection services is injured, is receiving medical care and uh, counselling. They've never said that about members of parliament who are beaten up, traumatized, hospitalized, admitted. They have never organized uh, trauma counseling for them. They have never organized any medical care for them. Why? Because they are not members of the ANC. Members of parliament in the eyes of those presiding officers is members of the ANC. The rest of us are animals who deserve to die. And when we stood up to tell Valeka that you must protect all of us, we must enjoy protection from you as a speaker, as members of parliament. The, 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 the so-called feminists say, no, they are taking women. What is attacking women about that when you ask for protection from a presiding officer who is more bothered about the protection services than members of parliament who enjoy certain privileges and such privileges have been waived in protection of protection services which don't enjoy any privileges from uh, the act of uh, a parliament. So they do that because they are partisan, they are irrational, they are not reasonable and they do not care. So we are now uh, taking the matter to court to have a, a Balega compelled by court to discipline Zoom. Because the constitutional court was not going to say to us, discipline Zuma or remove Zuma. They just said to us, yes, done wrong things. What happens next is for parliament to institute impeachment process or disciplinary action to take further the decision of the constitutional court. The constitutional court can't say, this person acted unconstitutionally and it ends there. Nothing happens. If, if you allow parliament to continue as if nothing happened from the constitutional court, you are rendering the constitutional court useless. You are doing exactly what they were doing with public protectors remedial action. It can't be business as usual. So we want the court to compel Baleka to take disciplinary action because the court said to parliament, you failed as well when you were supposed to protect the office of the public protector yourself and make sure the president is compliant with the remedial action of the public protector. You didn't do that. <coughs> so we want parliament compelled by the court to institute impeachment or a disciplinary action. Zuma must come before a committee and answer why did he lie to parliament that he's got a bond when he knew very well he doesn't have a bond. Zuma must come and answer that question. And all of those things that he misled parliament with. Now, we've taken a decision to approach the constitutional court directly on this matter and not go through the lower court because these are constitutional court implications. And therefore, it will be wrong to want a, a, a junior court to second guess what are the types of actions to be taken following the constitutional court a, a decision. So we are going back to the constitutional court to get that uh, 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 compelling judgment against uh, the speaker. We have written a letter to IPID to expose all police who were involved. We are asking IP to investigate if there was a police involved and whether that was in direct violation of the Constitutional Court because um, that's what exactly what they did. And then 
as you could have seen for yourselves, some of those people in white shirt are ANC branch activists. There is no one, that's, that's, that's what we are subjected to. There is no one or multi-party committee or process that engages in vetting of individual members of the protection services if they are partisan or not. As a result, the ANC goes and recruits chairpersons and secretaries of their branches who are not going to be reasonable in executing the illegal instruction of the presiding officers. The lady who was uh, beating us up there is an ANC activist. It's an ANC activist hired, an Askari hired to come and kill members of the EFF and opposition. I mean, she just went to, she was holding the neck of that other white man uh, 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 from Freedom Front. <laughs> and there was never an instruction for that man to be removed. I don't know why the white man was being <laughs> manhandled there in, in, in fact. You can see it's an ANC hatred. So anything that is opposition, a protection service member is prepared to attack. You don't have to be told yourselves on how journalists were treated. We protected you. <laughs> Members of the EFF protected you. I, I know Commissar Chaboko, our whip in the, in the NCOP, had to fight a policeman who was harassing a journalist and say, leave this person to do their work. When they closed you down in the old uh, assembly, they closed the gate and not allowing you to enter. We had to go and pull the gate and then push police away to allow you to enter parliament. At the beginning, for sure some of you were even happy that this EFF members now is visiting you. In the same way, it will visit all South Africans who are so happy to tweet about it and do nothing about it.